Today we're going to talk about hormonal therapy and how it can help patients with breast cancer. Let's talk first uh, about the basic physiology, the basic principles of um, breast tissue itself, not cancer, and how breast develops. Okay, so if you back to uh, early years in our lives, back into the embryo stage, okay, so uh, human beings in the in embryo stage, we all have sex hormones. So if you have higher estrogen to testosterone ratio, the estrogen will promote the development of um, female characteristics. If we have higher testosterone to estrogen ratio, the testosterone to estro high estrogen, high, uh, sorry, high testosterone to estrogen ratio will promote development of male characteristics. And then when it comes to puberty, there will be a rise in hormones as well. So if you have higher estrogen to testosterone ratio, so estrogen is the female hormone, testosterone is the male hormone. If you have higher ratio of estrogen to testosterone, this will pr promote the growth of secondary sexual characteristics like the breast that usually female have, has, and also the voice, okay, the hair distribution, the body fat distribution, uh, and all the other sexual secondary characteristics. During adult life, estrogen and progesterone, which are the two main uh, female sex hormones, help to maintain the secondary characteristics, okay? So this is the normal physiology of how hormones act on normal breast tissue, okay? So let's put that on the back burner for a second. Now, let's come to explain what is cancer, okay? So what is cancer? Let's talk basic physiology. At any given moment in our lives, our cell divides. Of course, there are cells that don't divide like the brain, and there are cells that divide every and change every seven days, like, uh, for example, the skin or the gut, okay? This division is regulated by many mechanisms that uh, the body usually sends signals to the cell or the cell itself, it repairs itself if there is something going out of control. Sometimes, in any given point in time, one of the cells can become crazy and just divide with no stop, without any regulations. When that happens, the body and the immune system can control the cells and kill it. But whenever the body cannot control that single cell, single cell that started dividing and multiplying like crazy, boom, that's what makes cancer. So I do have cancer cells in my body right now, but my body can control them and kill them. They cannot go out of control. People with cancer, for some reason, that cell, if it's located in the breast, went crazy and formed this tumor that start spreading everywhere and spreading to different organs and causing dysfunction. So that's cancer in a nutshell. Okay, so how hormone therapy can help patients with breast cancer, okay? So let's talk about the normal physiology of hormones, okay? So this is the pituitary gland, the gland located here in the, in the brain, and uh, we have the ovaries and then we have the breast tissue itself. The pituitary gland sends signals toward the ovaries and tell the ovaries to produce estrogen and progesterone. And then this estrogen and progesterone from the ovaries will go and act on the normal breast tissue and maintain the breast tissue characteristics, the shape and the function of it, right? When breast cancer happens, some cancers, around 70 to 80% of breast cancers in total, they have receptors of those hormones, the estrogen and progesterone, and they really like those hormones. So what we can do is we can cut the hormones, cut the nutrition from the cancer itself. And we can do that several ways. We can either go and tell the pituitary gland, stop producing signals toward the ovaries and telling them, from produ telling them pro to produce estrogen and progesterone. And this group of medication uh, comes with its own side effects which we're gonna talk about. Or we can go and suppress the ovaries itself from producing estrogen and progesterone. And example, we have medications called like um, aromatase inhibitor, like anastrozole, letrozole. Or we can go and prevent the interaction between the hormones and the breast tissue itself. So we can block the signal here. And an example of that is tamoxifen. Okay, an example of drug that works on the pituitary gland is uh, luprolide. So it prevents the pituitary gland from sending signals. So as you can see, we can prevent the interaction of these hormones with the breast cancer on several levels. But we don't use all of it at once. We usually choose one treatment and then we add on because it doesn't make sense. Your goal is to block the interaction. Blocking it at several points doesn't add value except in certain situations. Okay. 
So when hormonal therapy is used or anti-hormonal therapy is used in case of breast cancer, it's used in early stages of breast cancer. So patients who have a small mass in the breast and that was treated with surgery, if the breast cancer have the receptors, they might get hormonal therapy. But you're going to ask me why? If we do a surgery and we, re we remove the breast cancer, and we, we, we find the breast cancer in early stages and we remove that breast cancer. So why are we giving hormonal therapy? Because cancer is a systematic disease. Although we were able to remove that small tumor from the breast itself, we cannot guarantee 100% that there is couple of cells that left that tumor and traveled somewhere else in the body and we need to cut the nutrition from those cells and that's why we use it in early stages or we can use it in later stages of breast cancer okay so for example if a person who has a breast cancer and that was treated and they had recurrence in the future or if their breast cancer has already traveled all over the body and that's how they presented we can still use it in later stages of breast cancer and we can also use hormonal therapy in prevention of breast cancer. Some people who have high risk, I mentioned that in previous videos about the risk factors of breast cancer. They have family history. They have first degree relative diagnosed with breast cancer. They come from certain ethnic backgrounds and they don't want to do surgery to move or they have specific mutations like the BRCA1 and BRCA2, the angina and Julie mutation. If they don't want to do surgery to move their breasts, they might consider going on therapy. Remember, this video is not for a medical advice. This video is just to tell you about the hormonal therapy, if you are having symptoms of breast cancer, it's very important to talk to your healthcare provider about what is the appropriate treatment for you and what are the available options, okay? So this is when it comes to the treatment. Now, what are the side effects, okay? So like any other medication that we use, there is always side effects, okay? So that's how medicine works. Unfortunately, we are not into the stage where we produce, a, where we uh, use a medication that has no side effects. Everything comes with some risks, but everything comes also with benefit. The benefit here is we can control breast cancer. We can prevent the breast cancer from growing. And breast cancer is a life threatening. But the risk is those side effects. In case of hormone positive breast cancer, when we give medication, although there are some side effects, but the benefit of preventing and controlling the breast cancer from growing outweigh the risk okay so what are the side effects okay so first it can affect the mood okay so you might experience mood swings while you are on hormonal therapy it might cause hot flashes it might cause depression it might cause headache it can lead to clots in the lungs or clots in the legs and that's why we see like usually men are more likely to develop heart attack and they're more likely to develop a clot because they have less estrogen which is the female hormone so when we decrease the female hormones or we block them so it's more likely you are more likely to develop a clot but i've seen lot, tons of patients on hormone therapy and they don't experience those side effects and they don't develop clots it doesn't mean if you are on those medications you're going to develop those side effects 100 percent it can lead to some gastrointestinal disturbances like decreased appetite um, some ache stomach ache or diarrhea or changes in the bowel habits it can lead to changes in the uh, menstrual cycle, it can lead to vaginal discharge, and it can lead to joint pain and muscle pain. Also, it can interact with other medications. So if you are taking antidepressants or antipsychotics or any other medication, it's very important to talk to your healthcare provider about whatever medica what med medications you are taking and discuss with them the risks and the benefits, and if there is an interaction, they can switch to something else. So this is in a nutshell hormonal therapy for patients with breast cancer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you or your beloved ones were diagnosed with breast cancer, you're considering hormonal therapy, I hope this video is part of your journey. But remember, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next episode.